I'm Ron Wyden, one of Oregon's United States Senators. As part of my responsibilities here in the Senate, I serve as the senior Democrat on the Senate Finance Committee. That's the committee that, among other issues, is in charge of the American tax code. And we are very lucky today to have Ms. Nina Olson. She is the taxpayer advocate. This is a position established specifically to uh, stand up for taxpayers. Uh, the tax code is a complicated uh, uh, system by anybody's uh, assessment. Every tax season, uh, many uh, individuals turn to tax preparers. And I think there is a real challenge, particularly at home in Oregon, where we've worked hard to try mm -hmm. to have good standards mm -hmm. for preparers, mm -hmm. how to make sure that everywhere mm -hmm. the American people who mm -hmm. use taxpayers mm -hmm. are able to ensure that they have preparers who meet high standards. Mm -hmm. Today, with software, anybody can be a preparer, and so there's no guarantee that the person you're going to knows anything about the tax law, which is incredibly complex. So I've proposed a regulation of return preparers, basically establishing minimum standards of competency, testing, continuing education, and the IRS tried to implement that, and the court said, no, you don't have the authority to do it. So we've turned to Congress to grant that authority to the IRS, and it will take legislation. Chair Chairman Hatch and I have worked on the Senate Finance Committee on this in a bi bipartisan way, and one of the reasons I felt strongly about this was that Oregonians, preparers, and, and others said, look, this is a system that makes sense. I think it would be helpful to get an update on what you think perhaps the one or two biggest challenges you're hearing about now are. Well, you referred to it earlier, the complexity of the Internal Revenue Code. You know, it's just so hard for people to figure out what's the right answer. And at this point, there's so many provisions in the code. I just give you an example of the education provisions. You know, it's very difficult to figure out whether you've selected the right one. People make mistakes. They also feel, have I gotten as much, you know, credit as I should back or, you know, a, a reduction in my taxes. And all of that confuses taxpayers undermines confidence in the system and costs. Costs the taxpayer, costs the system to administer. I certainly feel for purposes of tax reform, which ought to be a priority in 2017, another bipartisan uh, priority, both the education provisions and the retirement mm -hmm. provisions could be simplified in a significant way. Many persons have questions about e-filing, yes. and I think the question here would be, what is going on at the IRS now to make this easier and more user-friendly for people? Yeah, so I think that there are two competing things. One is to have security, so that when you're e-filing and you're signing on, you know, that somebody else isn't getting access to your information, and that's a major focus of the IRS right now. The IRS, in terms of ease of e-filing, you know, it has through its website both free fillable forms and free file, and free file is for lower income people. But there's also free fillable forms, which people don't know about, which is like a 1040, but you can fill it in online and then send it in electronically. If Oregonians have questions, if people in other parts of the country have questions, where should they look? What are the numbers? How, how should they yeah. go about quickly getting that information? So there is the 1040 number that's in the phone book. Um, there is the walk-in site. It also would be helpful because it varies from season to season, and I know this from back in my days when I was director of the Oregon Great Panthers and we saw these ripoff artists always try to get out in front of mm -hmm. the agencies. What are the common scams? People are getting calls that say, this is the IRS and we're going to call the sheriff out on you if you don't pay us $5,000 within 45 minutes. Or they'll, they'll say, we're filing a lien on you and to avoid that, we'll do the following. And they're um, claiming these people, these fraudsters are claiming to be, be IRS the IRS. People. And they will give names out. 
Um, we've seen scams where they're told to, once they make the deposit into a bank account, send the receipt to the main IRS building. And, you know, it's a real address. Um, they will give out badge numbers, which the IRS employees have, so it sounds very credible. What's your advice to uh, Oregon taxpayers if they think that they have been ripped off? Well, I think two things. If you get a call like that, the first thing you should know is that in most instances, the IRS doesn't call out. We certainly don't threaten we're so going to get a sheriff. So the general rule, if somebody calls and says we're from the IRS, just the fact it's a person claiming to be the IRS, that should kind of set off a little buzzer right. Right. and people right. say, the IRS generally does not call. Unless you are expecting a call. You've been right. working with the IRS right. and you're expecting something. And then, you know, you can get off the phone and call the IRS or go on the website because they list the most current scams and you can see whether you recognize your fact pattern. If something has happened to you and you've actually paid that money over, there's not much that we can do about that except you can call the IRS and we'll give you those numbers to report the scam. And it would actually be the Inspector General for Tax Administration that you would report that scam to. Now the IRS has been talking about something they call their future state vision that suggests that there'd be more online uh, interaction with taxpayers. You've expressed concern about uh, this and I think it'd be helpful, one, for you to tell us what future state vision is and two, what your concerns are. Well, I think the future state vision is, is saying, you know, we've had limited resources for a while and so we need to sort of think about how we use our resources and we also need to get more electronic because that is a way, you know, people expect to have digital accounts and be able to communicate digitally. And I'm very supportive of that. Um, so that's sort of looking at people being able to do self-service with the IRS, get in and see their account and say, oh, here's the problem and I'm going to fix it online or that your preparer or your tax professional could get into your account and take care of things and not have to call the IRS, et cetera. The other downside of that is that I think that there are a lot of people that may use those accounts, but when you have a particular problem, you want to talk to someone. You want to know it's been taken care of. My concern is the IRS isn't really counting for how much of their work they'll still have to do by phone or even person to person. I know that your reports are avidly read by both Democrats and Republicans in the Senate and the Finance Committee because as you have today, you haven't brought up Democrats and Republicans. You said, look, this is what we need to do and, and, and why. So I really appreciate the fact that as the taxpayer you know, advocate, you're really the taxpayer independent you know, right. ad advocate. Right. Right. And I appreciate that service. And is there anything else you'd like to say as we wrap up? I'm really hopeful that, that IRS will heed what people are saying about what they need for their service in the future. If taxpayers have problems they can't resolve with the IRS, they can go to their Oregon local taxpayer advocate. The office is in Portland. The phone number's on the web. And there's a live human being that will talk to you and will assign someone to work your case from start to finish. Well, let's plan to do this again. Thank you Thanks so much, Thanks very much Senator. for coming.